Exactly. <laughs> Just kidding. No. No. Yeah. Okay. Don't tell us. What's up, El Paso? Yeah, she's like, hey, I'm right, hold it. We're back at this week's podcast, week episode four. Um, I have some amazing doctor, guests go, today. I don't know what happened. Kind of see. I'm waiting for Emily to come in. It down phone. It's amazing. They're but right now we have Enrique with the Child Crisis Center <laughs> of El Paso. We have Corey with the owner of the Rhinos. We have Rico. He has foul mouths. Um, Dewey's Corner Pub and the El Paso Wing Factory, and then also Emily from What in Wild is about to join us. So we're just waiting on the guys, the audio, um, to get everything straight. We're tested. We're all good to go on the mic. Yeah, we're pretty okay, much. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, um, and then we'll jump into this podcast. Thank you so much. Just bear with us. Lots of cool information coming your way. Thank you so much for going local. I greatly appreciate you all following. And I hope you're planning to go to Montelliani's either tonight or tomorrow for Dining with the Dead. My Nina is in town this week only. If you guys are looking for card readings, call, text her now to schedule yours. Again, she's only in town this week. So that's really exciting. Um, and if you're a business owner and you're interested in you know, either getting a featured on Annie's Adventures, um, pages or on the podcast just reach out to me and we'll talk okay? do it it's highly recommended <gasps> thanks rico got you. Got you. <laughs> i love it awesome so we got two minutes and then we're gonna go live let's see we're also streaming on the dial like internet radio network anyway because we stream live so just a bunch of different ways to get different it different platforms to yes. get the info out And the podcast, we're getting all, just for you guys at home, we're getting all that audio worked out. Um, bear with us on the first couple of episodes. The tuning is a little, you know, <laughs> just bear with us. Um, but it's getting better, I swear, I swear. Okay, <laughs> that being said. Let's see here. Switch. Don't forget to follow the Dialogue Internet Radio. That's where you can find all of Abel's different shows that he has. And Emily's coming from far, so she can just join us when she gets in. And if you can, just talk into the mics. Um, yeah, sometimes a lot of people are like that. But... So we gotta get like right over it. Yeah, that's what Abel says. That's about right. But that yeah. scares me because. When I was listening to the audio, I was like, Ew. Yeah, but we had a bad chord on you that it's time. just the chord. <laughs> go, go ahead and turn your mic this way. There you go. Awesome. Talk right into it. Check, check, check. That's check, it. Check, we got you. Cool. We got you. <laughs> What's yes, up with the turtle? Guys. The turtle. That's, oh, that's yeah. his mascot. <laughs> the turtle? Yeah. It's uh, called Tortuga Studios. Yes. Tortuga because Studios. when I was a younger kid, uh, the whole front where you guys parked, it used to be open desert. And the Tortugas, when the rain... The tortugas would all come out. And Emily's gonna come in through that door right now too. Oh, is she? Yeah, just heads up. <laughs> I know, but it's hiding my glasses, so it's good. I like the tortuga in there. <laughs> the tortuga is cool. <laughs> awesome. You guys remember Rico <laughs> and Enrique, Corey? It's been a little while, but you've been on Annie's adventures. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we should be starting soon. You let me know when y'all are ready. Welcome back El Paso to this week's episode of the Annie's Adventures podcast. Um, thank you for tuning in. I'm live on my Annie's Adventures Facebook and Instagram page. I'll, I'll be posting it to Instagram later. We're live on Dialogue Internet Radio's Facebook page. And we'll also be posting to our YouTube channels and getting you guys that, that podcast link. But welcome back. Um, this week I have some more amazing local businesses. It's a full table today. So we're just going to go on and jump in because everybody's busy. And we got places to be because we've got freaking awesome events to bring to you guys um today we have rico thanks for coming rico hello rico's with foul mouths of the el paso wing factory and dewey's corner pub 
We have Enrique with the Child Crisis Center of El Paso, and we have Corey with the El Paso Rhinos. Thank you so much for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, Emily is on her way, like I said, from, the, from Wet n Wild, so as soon as she gets in, we'll go on and, and get her in as well. But let's go on and start. Every uh, podcast, I do like to ask a marketing question. I'm in marketing as my day job. I work at Leo Marketing. So anybody at home, if you guys ever need any help with your um, brokering deals for TV, radio, billboard, print, OTT, at no cost to you, I can help you with that. Social media, websites, video production, graphic design, photography, SEO, Google, branding, everything and anything, I can help you under one roof here locally in Central El Paso. So that being said, I do like to ask each business owner, um, what type of marketing do you find works for you guys? Uh, and do you have any tips and, or advice for business owners? Do you have any help with your uh, brokering deals? For Sorry, guys. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> so, yeah, do you have any tips or advice? <coughs> yes, oh. Rico, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, we use, uh, being that we're restaurant and bar based, we use uh, mostly social media Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, snappy chatty uh, <laughs> the talker or whatever I'm not hip to all of it but <laughs> I know it works and then uh, the most effective one for us has been word of mouth um, interacting with our guests and making sure they had a good experience and of course if they leave a positive review that we kind of share it and get it out there and encourage our staff to do the same absolutely um, and you have three different businesses they're all in the hot spot of uh, off of Piedras the new that I'm telling you that Central Paso is booming. Yes. Um, so, in all three, you're doing that for all three businesses. Correct. We're okay. Doing it for all three. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And do you have any tips or advice for business owners out there? Uh, be present. That's the ultimate part. Um, if you're not present in your establishment, you have no clue what's going on unless you have a solid team. I'm fortunate enough to have um, a great GM overseeing two of the operations. And I married her, so. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> she is a sweetheart, by the way. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and let's go on to Enrique with the Child Crisis Center. What types of, you guys are booming right now. Like I'm seeing you guys everywhere I turn. Um, what type of marketing is working for you guys? Do you have any tips or advice for businesses out there? Absolutely. In the past, we've always dealt with social media. Mm -hmm. well, um, in the past, it hasn't been very widely used, but now under with the new guidelines administration, the things we're doing, we're doing things much more differently. Mm -hmm. We're really going heavy on, on Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, and LinkedIn. Yes. Uh, mainly Facebook has been very, very good to us. And now, of course, we're getting a professional help with Annie on my side here. <laughs> Thank you. So if I can suggest to anybody, get somebody professional to help you as well. She's always giving us good advice as how to market, what to market, and what time to market, and who to reach out to. So that's what we're relying on right now. Of course, our business is a little <clears throat> bit different. It's not so much looking for customers. because. Right. Our services are sought out by regulatory agencies. It's more of a reaching out to the community to help us out yes. to serve the children. Right. So Facebook has been very helpful. Perfect. And do you have any tips or advice uh, for business owners, management, anybody out there trying to yes. figure this out? <laughs> Even though different services, like we were talking right now, but you have to be present. You really yes. have to be involved, not just saying, here, you go take care of this. I'm very personally involved with our social media. I, I love doing it. But then again, I also have... Obviously, you're helping me, so that's Definitely. a great thing, but you have to be involved in what you're doing. 100%. Awesome. 100%. Thank you, Enrique. You're welcome. Corey, what works for the rhinos? What type of marketing have you all done, um, and do you have any advice? Well, we uh, we do a lot of social media, too, and uh, you know, every year we just try and be more and more involved in our community, like doing different community events, <laughs> um, different things like that, like being like last year we weren't able to uh, be out in the schools when we have a skate mates program. You know different things like that and just like word of mouth and we try and make you know we try and make our games to be like a really good time for families mm -hmm. and uh, we really market the team through our different youth programs like through the figure skating program through the youth hockey program through okay. the adult program but uh, we do a lot of uh, a lot of social media okay That's the one. okay awesome and do you have any advice for business owners out there you know like we have an unbelievable staff like we're truly truly blessed to have an unbelievable <laughs> staff they're you know, very, very dedicated and very hardworking. So, you know, that, that's one of the, you know, I guess the best thing that we have. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. All right. So, Emily's coming down. I'll get through those questions at the end, but let's go on and start uh, with Rico. Um, let's do a deep dive with your three businesses. Let's introduce them. Let's let people know where you guys are, how to find you, and what you guys got going on. 
Okay. Uh, first, I guess I'll start with um, what got us into Five Points area was Dewey's Corner Pub. Um, it's entering its sixth year of operation, which is a milestone for us because for bars, if you know your first five years, that's where you know you made it or not. Right. And uh, we were able to stay afloat. You know, it was a rocky first two years. Um, and of course, being shut down for COVID was a little rough, but um, we pushed through and went back to uh, normal operations. And uh, Dewey's Corner Pub was a concept for Five Points because there wasn't like a real corner pub vibe yet. Mm -hmm, there was mm -hmm. plenty of bars and establishments, but nothing that just kind of had that uh, New York, Brooklyn type, okay. you know, pub feel. Um, from there, uh, we saw the area and the potential, so we opened up. Uh, the Opasa Wing Factor is a concept that was near and dear to me for a long time. Uh, wings, but not just your average wing, but a craft wing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we incorporated some really cool um, sauces. Our street taco wing, which isn't just your, it's not your basic taco wing. It's an actual street taco wing. Um, a peanut butter and jelly wing that we're really oh, proud of. Don't get me started uh, on that it's, wing. It's some good stuff. And uh, we have our uh, cilantro lime, which is really good. Mm -hmm. Raspberry habanero, mango habanero. And we are working on a special wing that we tasted yesterday. That we'll call you to promote <gasps> once we launch. It's going to be really good. And, of course, our craft burgers. Um, and and uh, craft beers as well with a cool beer, beer garden out in the back. Um, and that was about a year, we're about a year and six months into the Opasa Wing Factory. Um, a year into the Opasa Wing Factory, we decided to take advantage of a building that was in Central as well, a standalone unit, used to be a uh, Fat Bear, and um, we uh, managed to get the lease on that, and we turned it, we turned into a concept that we had called uh, Foul Mouths. So Foul Mouths is F-O-W-L, mouths as in the bird. Uh, so don't, it. it's not like uh, Dick's Last Resort. <laughs> we actually treat people nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that is pollo al carbón, clamatos, ice cold cervezas, and a full full bar. Oh, man. Um, that chicken, too. I saw it the other day on the smoker. Oh, yeah. Forget about it. We are it. not playing with our smoked chicken. <laughs> it's, it's smoked uh, for two hours. It's fresh, not frozen. And uh, we cook enough to get through the day. Everybody gets a fresh bird. Uh, the clamatos are an awesome recipe that I, I say for years, and uh, it's been good. It's been yeah. good, yeah. And uh, thank you for your service. Uh, thank you, yes. Um, that being said, you do have military discounts. Mm -hmm. You guys have different happy hours and stuff, and you also do different promotions throughout to help the Airborne chapter here in El Paso. Absolutely. Uh, as an Army veteran myself of 10 years, um, I found it near and dear to support local. And as Corey mentioned, you definitely want to be involved in the community. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Dewey's, we operated a little bit on the down low. Um, if customers would walk in and tell a story about their daughter or a niece that, you know, their car broke down or they can't pay a tuition or something, we'd slide a check there. Wow. Just not for recognition, just because they're the ones that actually help us pave the way and pay awesome. our bills. That's what it comes down to. And, um, we make it very clear we don't want any recognition on that. With the El Paso Wing Factory, we're a family-based restaurant. And though we don't do it for the recognition either, we do have to find the things that are near and dear to us and our community based as well. So when I saw the story about the Benavides Patterson chapter and their parking lot, um, them being shut down by the city because of their parking lot being a dirt road, um, that hit me very hard because one, I, I'd make it a point, uh, Memorial Day to make my way down to any VFW chapter, whether I'm a member or not, and kind of share stories. and to sit down with somebody who survived World War II, Vietnam, Korea, um, even current uh, conflicts, Saudi Arabia, Panama, and hear their stories and the passion in their eye. And like, they relive it like it was yesterday when they talk about uh, other soldiers that they lost or, or members. It, it hits my heart. And to see that happening to their chapter, um, it just affected me in a way that I wanted to 100% get involved. So. Mm -hmm sat down with our management team, sat down with my wife, and we said we need to do something. So we created the 82nd Airborne Wing, uh, American whiskey-based wing with mm -hmm. some bacon bits on it and maple. So it is good. It's delicious, and a dollar of every wing goes to the Benavides, chap Benavides Patterson chapter. Um, for those that know who Benavides or Patterson is, definitely Google those names. If you like a good war story, you'll be amazed. And, uh, of course, as an Airborne soldier myself, this, that chapter is very near and dear to me also. So we were able to collect so far $2,000 in our first month and a half of running that uh, wow. running that partnership with them. 
And I think we have about another 1,500 uh, so far collected. Go buy wings. Buy go wings, buy your growlers. Buy go buy your growlers, shots. Support I'm telling local. you. Because that chapter also donates bicycles for Christmas. Yes. They have scholarships. Um, I mean, grants. Uh, they do a lot of things for their community as well. Very we just cool. want to do our part. Awesome. And Five Miles, of course, we're still in our first 90 days of operation. So we're slowly finding our way towards what cause we want to do there. Um, besides offer great food and smiles to people in full mm -hmm. bellies. So. But support these local businesses, guys, especially uh, all of them. No, especially. Just support them all. I'm seeing all the time, unfortunately, doors are closing. Whether it's multiple locations, they're, you know, um, consolidating to... to from two locations to one location because of staffing or whatever it is we just have to go out and support when we can so thank you very much rico i appreciate that you're welcome um corey let's jump in real quick okay. with el paso rhinos um i'm gonna let you take it away uh, you guys uh, you're blowing up your social media is blowing up right now it's like back to back are you guys even getting a break well we see <laughs> so uh so what's happening right now is we're bringing in uh, a new hockey team into town where it's the top level, um, the junior hockey players in the, in the, in the world, actually. Wow. Um, and uh, we've been trying for the last 15 years to try and get into this league. And we finally, um, during the COVID last year, we finally were able to get in. And uh, so basically what happens is, is we have four different tryouts. And normally teams will have a tryout in Michigan, Minnesota, North Dakota, you know, where kind of hockey is very, very popular. Where are you from? I'm from Saskatchewan, Canada. Okay. So I came down. I heard the accent yeah. a little bit right yeah. now actually, when you it's, said it's that. Gone, it's, gone, okay. it's gone away. It's actually gone away a lot. Okay. Um, no, I came down here a long, long time ago to play for the Buzzards. And, and you loved us and, so much. You're and like, I loved it. Yes. And I, I ended up staying. But, uh, I love it. Um, so you were a former player. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. I wasn't very good, but I was a full player. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so instead of like having all these trials in like different you know cities and states in the U United States, we decided as an organization, like you know, like why don't we bring these four trials to El Paso? So you know, and and these trials, like the trial that it's coming that's starting next Wednesday. It'll be about 200 to 220 players coming from all over the world. Wow, in El Paso, too. In That's El great Paso. for our city. Yeah, so we, we thought, you know, like, why don't we bring all these players to El Paso so they can stay in our hotels, eat at mm -hmm. our restaurants, and, and, and uh, you know, rent our cars. And, and also, too, it, it helps us because we're very, very fortunate with the fan base that we have. You know, the last two trials we had, we had an all star game, we sold those out. Um, and That's it's great. pretty amazing just playing, you know, we're playing basically in the final we're playing ourselves mm -hmm. and uh, so um you know it really helps us when a player does make our team or a draft pick or or a, a kid that we've protected to really kind of sell our program and to recruit them to stay here because everybody every player like for the last 15 years every single player that's come and played in El Paso loves the city you know it's summer all the time you know where I'm from right you know, where I'm from in the winter is minus 50 and you're rolling your car Ew. after 30 minutes, no, you know. No. So <laughs> here they're going to the rink in flip-flops and shorts and they really, and they really, really like our community. You know, we're trying to be in the schools all the time and different charity events. Um, so they really, really like, you know, our community because like we have, a, like our community is, I think, you know, they're very genuine people, you know what I mean? And that's one of the reasons I stayed was, you know, like I come from a very small town in Saskatchewan and El Paso kind of reminds me of like the small town where, you know, like if you get broken down on the side of the street, within a couple of minutes, someone's stopping and say, "Hey, is everything okay?" Yeah. You know, so uh, but no, they love our our city, and uh, we our next big trial starts next Wednesday, and we'll have another All Star game uh, July thirty first. Awesome! Yeah. Very so, cool. Yeah, we're very very excited, and and you know we can't thank our fans and our supporters and and all that enough because it's been uh you know when when I played, you know I came with the buzzers when you know the buzzers were playing on the Coliseum and. You know, and it was Love it was a it was a good buzzers. time. Yeah. Now, actually, to be completely honest with you, like this type of hockey that's coming now is better than what we had when the buzzers were here. Because you know, there's like like we have some potential. Like we already have some players that are got their scholarship to the NCAA. Because so what what junior hockey is all about in hockey? It's a little bit different than football. In hockey, you play your high school hockey, then you play junior at like eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And then at 21, you get your NCAA Division One scholarship. Wow! And that's and so hockey kind of has that 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 period where they want us to develop our players so they're more mature, so they know when they go to school, they know what they want to be. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why the college freshmen are usually 21. So we already have some players that are coming that are already committed to playing Division One. We have some players that 
potentially could be drafted in the NHL. Wow. So it, it's uh, it's pretty pretty. Uh, it, it, like the difference is the difference is is these players are on their way up. Yes. Where when I was with the Buzzards, we were on our way down. Okay. So that's the kind of the difference. <laughs> well. That being said, I'm just telling you, I I mean, I've been going to the game since the Rhinos, okay? And, I mean, what a rowdy group of fans. Like, I do remember people did not want to play us here in El Paso. Yeah. They're like, we are known, like, we will we will talk back to the ref. Uh, and I want to even say that there was some kind of law in place where if you did yell or cuss at the ref or something, you were getting kicked out or going to jail or something. Um it was getting pretty bad there because that happened to my cousin. <laughs> he came back from Austin and didn't know the new rules, and he yelled at the ref, and we found out. That was very true. Um, but it's always a fun time there. I remember going, and, like, the cow, cowboy cheerleaders were there in, in the hot tub. Like, there was a hot yeah. tub on the side of the rink, and you could go and chill in there with the cowboy cheerleaders. I like your style, Corey. Oh, no, yeah. That was, <laughs> I was like, that wasn't me. That was, back in the, that was back in the Coliseum in the buzzer days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. See, like our arena, we're in the event center now. Okay. And we we hold, we hold just over two thousand, but uh, but it's it's smaller, but it's like what it really um, uh, lets us do is is it lets us have like public skating, mm -hmm. hockey, and figure skating. We're in the Coliseum, you know, like just last Saturday they had the tough heat Different program. concerts, yeah. And, so yeah. in the in the ice rink we get to be open, and now with us um, winning the craft hockey bill. Yes, thanks um, for bringing that up. Yeah, we were able to put uh, they gave, they gave us a donation of one hundred fifty thousand that we had to put towards the arena. So we ended up repairing our roof, insulating the roof, re replacing all the lights to LED, um, completely renovating the, the bathrooms and building walkways into the arena. So now we can be open year round. That's awesome. So we can have all our programs now year round. Heck yeah. And the best part about it is, is that there's going to be an NHL game coming to El Paso. Sometime, <gasps> that's right. Sometime in the I, fall. You, you let me know when that's yeah. happening. <laughs> uh, so that, that's, that's really exciting. And we're just happy for the city. Like if it yes. wasn't for the city and our fan and our fans and our supporters, we wouldn't have won off. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the, that's one thing I'm glad you mentioned that I do like to drill. As you guys know, on every podcast, I talk about marketing and everybody mentions social media. El Paso is a social media town. Any nationwide social media contest we have, El Paso wins. We do. You know what I mean? So it's really cool to see the city, you know, as, as long as they know what's going on, they got your back. You know, so it's cool to see when you guys won that and all yeah. the cool things that come with that. Yeah, and and if you look at all the past hockey bill um, winners, it's you know upper like closer to the Canadian border. Yeah, you know, and this is the first time it's been you know down at this border, and it's it's pretty exciting. That's cool. You know, it's gonna be awesome for El Paso. Yes. Like, just to to have that event, and and it'll be. It'll be really, really cool. Well, well, you guys, it's all going to be awesome. But, I mean, what you guys are continuing to do, like you said, you're going to have 200 different people in town next week. Like, you guys are bringing people to El Paso, which is, we need that, you know? So, um, and, and bringing them to a cool event. If you guys have never been to one of our hockey games, you're seriously missing out. The fans are amazing, which make the game even cooler. Um, the Every time I go, um, the team has so much fun. They get into it. I love it when... Um, the opposite team. I don't even know what's going on, what I'm trying to say right now, but I just remember going to the last game and the uh, like the teams were like yelling at each other but in a fun way and it was just it's it's a whole um a whole uh what's the word? experience, you know, and you don't just go and watch it on TV. Go to the game, guys. Go support our games, all of our local events that we have. We got baseball, soccer, hockey. Go and support them. Um you guys also help a lot of nonprofits in town. So, um, do you guys have anything coming up that we want to let people know about, uh, just so they put it on their calendars? Uh, right, right. Well, right now we have our, our big All Star Game on July thirty first. Um, we're doing a, a partnership right now with the Boys and Girls Club, Love it. where they're bringing in uh, um, kids every day this week, and I think every day next week. Um, you know, they bring them in for public skating and stuff. It's a kind of a partnership with them with the with the Rhinos that we're mm -hmm. very excited about. Um, you know, and hopefully, you know, this year we'll be able to start our skate mates program where basically our skate mates program, we have players, you know, usually one to two to three players that visit the same school um, once every two weeks. So, you know, they get to know the school, they get to know the students. 
um, you know, and uh, and that's been going on for I think about four or five years. Very cool. Um, but that that's a that's a great program. So hopefully we'll be able to do that this year too. Awesome, I love it. Is there anything else that we want to let the public know? Um, anything coming up or just get the information out? Um, no, just that, uh, you know, like the exciting thing is, is that the arena is open now uh, all summer, all year long. So we have all our different, yes. like learn to ski, learn to play, public skating, um, different things like that. Going yeah. On. If you guys are looking for different hobbies out there, I, I have a friend who goes, Sarah Amquest. I see her post all the time and she's like, doing these cool flips and stuff like she's learning to do the dang thing you know so go out there guys it's, it's very cool take your kids you have youth um programs um stuff for adults so it's not it's more than hockey yeah uh, absolutely like we uh we have like figure skating programs and learn to play learn to skate adult programs um basically everything mm -hmm. so very cool and how do they find you guys uh on our website del paso hockey uh, the rhinos is el paso rhinos .com. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yes. All right, Enrique. You wow. ready for your close up? Wow, well, this is <laughs> to follow these two great stories. Great oh, food, well, we still have great, more. Great, we have great more. activities. Have... And now to bring up my Debbie Downers. Oh, channel. please. Um, please um, tell me about your babies. <laughs> well, we are a nonprofit uh, child, we're an emergency child shelter for children that are 0 13. These are children that are victims of abuse and neglect, and that's why I'm saying it's a Debbie Downer, because these children come in here broken. I mean, sometimes emotionally, sometimes physically. So it takes a lot of work on our, on our the staff's behalf to build that rapport with them, mend their little souls and hearts, get them to trust adults again. Um, we see the worst of the worst of what people can do to little kids, mm -hmm. and it's saddening that these are kids that depend on us as adults to protect them and they're in this situation. Some of these kids have endured a life much more difficult than any of us in this room. I mean, at such an early age. And needless to say, so being that we're nonprofit, we do heavily rely on the community for donations. We get a moderate reimbursement rate from the state, but as anybody who has kids knows that kids are expensive. Yes. So we try to get the kids involved in so many extra activities that are not covered by any kind of reimbursements. We do, we have three kids right now that are actually gonna start football. They're going through the the training portion sure. of it, the, the harsh exercises <clears throat> to get them to, to the train, to the actual tryouts. And so we're gonna have to buy them cleats, the shirts, the shorts. And once they start the actual season, the helmets, the shoulder pads, and none of that is reimbursed, reimbursable. This is coming from when we reach out to El Paso, which is a great community for donations. So we're helping these children try to maintain that normalcy of going to their schools, of living the life a regular child lives. So we're always trying to have different events. Um, I know these great organizations have always supported us. I know you all, you've had a, a, a special program for us with Red, White, and Blue. Correct. You contributed to us. We've had gifts brought in by the Rhinos and the Chihuahuas. I mean, it's just... Everybody's been a blessing to our center, but our work has just begun. We are trying to serve many more children. There's so many more children out there that don't have placement. We get seven to 10 requests per day of people seeking placement for these children from all over the, the state of Texas. A lot of local, but a lot of also from the state across Texas. And we want to expand. We want to find a bigger location where we can house many more children and offer them these services on a larger scale. The need is there, and I know El Paso is a great community to help us meet that need, and we will. Uh, I know we'll, we'll achieve it. It might take some time and a lot of efforts, but I'm hoping to get there. Definitely, definitely. <clears throat> and real quick, Yvonne Lopez, she says, thank you for helping the community. Luis Duran, proud of what the work CCEP is doing. Keep up the awesome work. Um, you guys have a lot going on constantly, um, always different programs. So you have a bowl-a-thon coming up right now. Yeah, if you want to talk a little bit about that. That's going to be taking place August 22nd. Okay. So basically, we are sponsoring this event at Oasis Lanes. For, from 5 to 7, Oasis Lanes belongs to the Child Crisis Center. So we're asking for $150, gets you a whole lane for yourself for a team of five. Or you can individually do it for for thirty dollars each person. Mm -hmm. So, with that, you get a pizza for the table. Well, a couple of pizzas for the table, two drinks for each person there. 
chips and dips. And if you have children under the age, I think, of 10, you get a gift card oh, cool. for them to play at the arcade oh, cool. and two hours of unlimited bowling. It's going to be a great event. I know we just started advertising and we're selling those t those lanes Beautiful. pretty quickly. Beautiful. So again, all that money comes back to our operational funds because we're heavily based on donations. You yeah. know? So we have these big events just to bring in more money to continue providing the services that we've been doing for the last 40 years. Yes, yes. Um, and so... I know the other day I was there and um, you had an awesome volunteer who took it upon herself to find sponsorships for the children. After that, we got a lot of press for sponsorship opportunities. Let's talk a little bit about that. How can people um, sponsor a child? Absolutely. And I can't go without saying thank you, Ms. Diamond Price, yes. for setting this up as uh, a starting point for all the children. She basically asked the children, what, as if we could give you a couple of things, what would you wish? Their wish list. We're talking nothing too big, you know. One of the children asked for a backpack full of goodies. He got Pringles, he got Capri Suns. I mean, Talkies, it was a yeah. bag full of <laughs> goodies. Some other savvy teens asked for some um, tablets, mm -hmm. headphones, and they got them. Again, these are from donors from the community. But some of the things we couldn't fulfill, obviously, that they would put on the list, like, I want a mom. I want a family. I want a home. I want to visit my mom who I haven't seen. Little things like that. We can't really fulfill, obviously, because that's why they're there. But the smaller, the, um, so those were the big things. The smaller things like the tablets and all that, we can help them with that. And well, El Paso did. So what we're starting to do is just put the wish list as they come in, ask them what they want, and publish that list on social media. But on a continuing basis, we can always use new clothing for the children. What happens is when a child comes, usually they don't come with any clothes except what they're wearing. Mm -hmm. So we try to outfit them at least five, six outfits, shoes, everything. When they leave, they take it with them. It goes with them. We don't keep anything. It belongs to them. Mm -hmm. So needless to say that our supplies dwindle down. So we need to be kind of just refilling, replenishing to make sure that every child that comes to those stores has the basic needs. Mm -hmm. So we ask for donations on basic needs, which is the shoes, the clothes, Sometimes we have special needs that we'll be asking for, like we are for those football players. Uh, but there are extra things. Obviously, that's a little thing that's coming up in the future that we'll be asking for. Um, food supply. Mm -hmm. We're always asking for food donations so we can keep, you know, helping the children, helping our cook, just have the supply she mm -hmm. needs. And monetary donations. Monetary donations or maybe even gift cards helps us a lot. These kids sometimes have an experience going to the mall to buy their clothes. And that being said, real quick, I do want to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but... Uh, because people, we do ask for new items. Yes, too, we so do. we can wrap that into the same. We company. do, and you know, they've uh, never been to the mall. They've we, never and had a lot of. Because of that, of a lot of these kids have never had new items. They mm -hmm. usually either get stuff from hand me down from the older siblings, torn clothes. So when we give them something, and I wish I could show their faces on social oh, media, yeah. but I can't. You would see those big smiles, and and I think I think you got to experience that. It's for that them. Last They're week. like, it's for me. It's, this it's is mine. mine. This is new mm -hmm. for me. So that's why we really encourage the community to bring in new items because you're really making their day with them. Right, right. Um, let's see here. So, um, and as you guys know at home, kids, they don't like stay one size, right? You can't <laughs> buy or not, like, like find any kids that just don't grow. No, so they're constantly growing. They always need new um, shoes. Oh my gosh, I remember yes. my brother, every age he'd, he was turning 12 he started wearing size 12 shoes he turned 13 started wearing size 13 shoes you, you got school coming up you guys need undergarments you need backpacks you need school supplies you need all the things that all children need you guys need it but how many kids do you guys have we average from 20 to 25 but keeping in mind that they rotate a lot yeah. so the 20 to 25 can turn into 100 sometimes mm -hmm. because of the rotation mm -hmm. that they have Mm -hmm. How many kids do you have right now? Right now we have 19, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. With three pending coming in. Um, and I know the other day we did ask for kids' clothing. Is there anything specific that we're asking for right now that you guys um, need any help with? We're still asking for those sizes that are kind of out of the range. Yes. Baby clothing, uh, the infant's clothing, uh, and the older kids, the 13-year-olds. They don't look like they're 13, you know? They're eating good, they're, mm -hmm. they're, we're taking good care of them, <laughs> but they're not fitting into your regular clothing sizes. Mm -hmm. So they need to get more teenage, sometimes 
small in adults, things like that. And they can call you to get those sizes more Absolutely. specific? Okay, awesome. Um, and of course, you can reach them, reach out to them on Facebook, Instagram, on their on your all's website. You guys also have lists of items. If yeah. you guys go to their Facebook, because I know um, I did post, you guys can find some of their wish lists and so forth. If you go to the Facebook page, right in the about section is a long list that you scroll down to till you get to the first post. That is the list that we all need to be looking at. Those are the things that are needed, and if you can, please, um, everything helps. Help pay it forward, helps share the list even. Anything to get the word out, we greatly appreciate it. Is there anything else that we wanna let people know about right now that maybe we haven't touched on? I know we've got the donations, events, um, child sponsorships. Is there anything else that we wanna make sure that we hit on? Well, we really get in. We really need your support at this time. Um, COVID hit us, hit us, and it hit everybody in different ways. COVID um, kept kids from school. The schools are our safety net for children. So they're the ones when they go to school, counselors report the child abuse. And so needless to say, our numbers kind of went down a little bit. They're up right now. School starting August 2nd. And we see, we, we kind of foresee our numbers have a spike in increasing. So that means our supplies are gonna really get Okay. used up a lot so just okay. for the supplies and donations school supplies is that what you just mean, basic needs okay for basic needs every day go through it. Yes. sure every basic everyday basic needs. yes awesome and that's soap shampoos foods everything that you and i use every day guys yeah. these kids need it so please consider donating to the child crisis center of el paso um anything else that we mentioned cool. thank you very okay much. awesome thank you so much What's up, pretty lady? How you doing Hi. there, Emily? <laughs> Thanks so much for joining Hi. us today. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. Yes, and Emily's with Wet n Wild. Um, I just want to ask you a quick question to start off. <clears throat> what type of marketing do you guys use? What find, do you find works for y'all? Because I'm marketing, so I like to start asking that. And do you have any tips or advice for businesses out there? Um, so I do all of the social media marketing at Wet n Wild, and then we have a, a marketing director. He does like the traditional side of the marketing. So we do still do, um, you know, TV ads. We do billboards. Uh, we do print in uh, like kids magazines sure. and things like that. And then, uh, but really, a lot of our uh, budget is shifting to more and more to social. Yeah. I mean, we're, you know, moving a good. Portion. I mean, I think the goal is probably to move 50% of that into Believe social. It. And so that's everything from, you know, traditional uh, Facebook, Instagram, obviously, but now a big one is TikTok. Yeah. So um, right now you can't, at least if you're a, a small business, really monetize your, your ads on TikTok. So what we're doing is, um, you know, trying to generate a lot of user generated content. And that's kind of where we're trying to shift our focus. And that's into, even into the Facebook and Instagram too, we're doing a lot more trying to get people involved and sharing their their memories with us and their day with us. And um, that's right. You know, having them just tag us yeah. in it so we can see it and then we share it on our page. So that's really where a lot of our focus is. And then of course we also do like email marketing and, right. and things like that. Awesome. And do you have any tips or advice for businesses um, out there? Um, I would definitely say, you know, if you're not on your social enough, you can definitely do more. I think yes. sometimes people think that, oh, just one post a day or one post a I week I don't want to bother something. them. Yeah, I don't. They don't even see it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you would be surprised. I mean, we can do, I think um, one year we were doing up to 10 videos a day, yeah. and that's just videos. Yeah. And you can still do way more than that. Yes. So you can do more than you, than you think you can. People are not going to get annoyed with you either. exactly <laughs> and, the, and that's the thing that our organic reach is less than one percent at random of our current followers um so really you should be posting as much as you can whenever you can including stories live feeds everything mm -hmm. use those tools they're at your fingertips um so thank you on that uh, so wet and wild oh my gosh i've had so so much fun there this summer. <laughs> yeah, I think we've had you at like maybe twice. Yes. You came another time with your, your friends, right? Yes. Like three times. Yeah. Yes, three times. I've been there three yeah. times already. <laughs> that cabana is freaking amazing, and that's really the best way to do yes. life, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think when, when we had you at, we got you in one of our new uh, kids' area yes. cabanas. We just put in, I think, maybe like 12 or, or 15 new cabanas oh, wow. this year and so you know every year we're trying to add add something new we had a new ride last year that a lot of people didn't get to enjoy because of covid so it's so kind of awesome. like a new grand opening this year so yes. uh, and you got one enjoy. coming 
Yes, how did you find out some facts? Because I live on social media. Yeah, she already knows. We put the sign up yesterday. Yeah, and yeah, she yeah. already knows. Yeah, new ride coming next I'm so year. excited. Oof, I don't even know what it is yet, but I know that it's a new ride. I know so I want on it. As long as it's not like the, what is it, that that funnel one? Oh, that funnel oh, one. Oh, yeah. The, does not like big me. funnels on yeah. their sides. Yeah, those things are ginormous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm well, it's, sure. And it's not really, like, I don't know how to swim. <laughs> So I psyched myself up. Normal people, this is not the case. But for me, it was it was interesting. But you went down that the newest one, right? Oh, I went through them all. Oh, They're yeah. awesome. Yes, I love that mm -hmm. contour or con yeah, condor is secret. Condor, That's yes, the one. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a high thrill. If any of you want to go, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Take the whole family. Um, you guys have a big show coming up too. Steve. Um, Steve Aoki. Yes. Man, Aoki. Steve Aoki is coming to Wedding Wild. How crazy is That's that? Awesome. I can't even believe it that Steve Aoki is coming. <laughs> yeah, he's coming on, I think it's Friday, August 17th. Okay. And uh, that's actually through through an event promoter. So we'll by then, since the schools are starting, we're gonna be open only weekends by then. Oh, okay. Uh, so this week and next week are our last full weekdays open. Mm. And then by the time uh, we have Steve Aoki, that's on a Friday night, so the park won't be open during the day. It'll just be the concert. Okay. For him. Okay. Yeah, and people can get tickets for him exclusively, pretty much through um, that website, and that's steveaokiep.com. Awesome. Awesome. Get those tickets guys um i i see him reposting too and everybody yeah. fit fam everybody sharing the good news yeah, so it should so have fun. a good I crew saw he, a good uh, crowd uh tagged us on uh on the post that he shared yeah. and i saw it i was like Stevie, okay. little freaking <laughs> out <laughs> yeah that was really good that's awesome um so right now also like you mentioned you're open seven days a week mm -hmm. um those season passes pay themselves off in two visits in guys two visits yeah yeah we're still selling season passes too there's still plenty of season left to be had so we've got the rest of this week, and we've got all of next week, and then we're open weekends through September. Yeah. The very end of September, we extended it. So normally, we only go up until that Labor Day, and this year, we're going all the way through September because, awesome. you know, El Paso weather's good Why not, weather. right? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's still going to be hot, and you're going to be ready to get out. So When does your season start? Our season typically starts on the first weekend of May. Okay, So cool. the very first weekend, we're open weekends until about uh, Memorial Weekend. And then we open, Seven. you know, kind of once the schools come out. And uh, we have all of our great employees who are uh, high school age. And yeah. they come back out every year. So it's really great. Awesome. Is there anything else we want to mention? Um, uh, we've got a pretty cool thing coming up. It's the annual Lifeguard Olympics that we do every cool. year. And uh, that's happening on August 1st. We have we invite all the lifeguards from around the city. So we've got El Paso Parks and Rec. We've got Socorro. We have Fort Bliss. We have the El Paso County uh, lifeguards that are going to come out. And of course, Gwen Wild lifeguards that will be there uh, competing. And it's really a, a fun community event just promoting, um, you know, everything that lifeguards do and uh, showing off the skills that they work so hard with and it's you know fun competition for them yeah to do and they do everything from uh, you know endurance like obstacles and uh, skills tests CPR oh, and cool. uh, victim rescue so it's a really fun event that yeah. uh, a lot of them get into and we need we always need lifeguards that even at uh, you know, the city pools and, and any other pool, we always need lifeguards. So it's a really fun event for all of them to come out to the park and just have fun yeah. and have a good day afterwards. A lifeguard royale. Yes, you know? I really I love, it. I love it. The most lifeguards ever on that day. I mean, I'm sure all these teen teenagers are like, so we can go and watch? No. <laughs> um, okay, so we got that. But also follow them on Facebook and Instagram because you guys do other things. Like you just had the largest swimming event. Yes. You also do other like lessons and, and mm -hmm. different events throughout the season. Yeah, we do. We always do events all the time. Normally we have more concerts than we did this year. We're really glad that we were able to have some. Yeah. We're having CD Oki in, in, uh, in August. Um, but we always have uh, things going on, you know, events, night events, um, DJs, DJs. Yeah, um, I don't think we're having neon paint this year, but I'm sure it'll make its way back, uh, and that's a really fun event. Yeah. yeah. So people can follow us. We always have deals and discounts and specials going on. So yeah, social media is definitely the best way to get into 
you know, get the best deals. I love it. And guys, the park is beautiful. The water is so nice. The weather here, just like go jump in the water. What are you even doing sitting at home complaining that there's nothing to do? Go to Wet n Wild. Go see the rhinos. Go eat some badass wings. Yeah, I said it. I cussed a little. It's okay. They're freaking awesome. And y'all are sitting at home wanting to help because this is a city of helpers. Help the Child Crisis Center of El Paso. Please, please, please. Thank you so much for going local, guys. Thank you so much for your time today. Follow Wet n Wild on Facebook and Instagram. You can buy your tickets online. Same with El Paso Rhinos. Same with all you guys, right? Mm -hmm. We're all on social media. That's how you can find us. Um, also, I am looking for sponsorship opportunities for this podcast. I also have advertisement opportunities coming up for an upcoming website I'm developing. So there's all kinds of new, cool things going on. If you want me to come out to your business, reach out to me and we'll start talking. Otherwise, thank you so much for going local and tell them I sent you El Paso. Thank you.